Hey everybody, welcome to the Crown Jewel Review. I'm Brett Mix here at Montreal Wrestling 101. Please hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. I do reviews every day on the history of wrestling and up-to-date live reviews on shows like this. This one took place Saturday night, November the 4th, 2023 at Riyadh, Saudi Arabia at the Muhammad Abu Arena. Uh, this one, it took place at night time, even though it was 10 a.m. my time, Pacific time, and 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, the ropes were all white as usual. I think that WWE likes the, their events with the white ropes. I think there's some, some kind of contrast with their high-definition uh, apron and uh, barricade. I think that's the combination. They like the white ropes. It's all about HD. It's all about how it looks now. It's it's not about... I used to love it when they have the raw red ropes, SmackDown blue ropes, pay-per-view black ropes, maybe black gold black, like WrestleMania 10. I like that. Nonetheless, we have the kickoff show, and it's Sami Zayn taking on J.D. McDonough. This one started with both of them playing to the crowd, given where they were. Of course they would. They started this off with a chain wrestling sequence. They countered each other's hammer locks into arm bars, into arm drag takedowns, followed by a side headlock by J.D. McDonough, who's awkwardly not into the Judgment Day yet. Uh, a, a monkey flip, not officially anyway, a monkey flip followed by two leapfrogs gave J.D. McDonough this weird bounce on the ropes and he botched the landing. Zayn then went for offense, but J.D. countered. Zayn turned him inside out with a splash to the corner. Fans chanted, ole, 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 ole. And every, I guess you don't have to speak English, to, or everyone knows that chant. It's the same language each chant. Each, chant. each word is the same. Zayn caught a huge missile dropkick in the midair by JD to Zayn, who went for an axe handle, but actually ate this big time draw kick. You can see what Shawn Michaels sees in JD McDonough. They just said on commentary that uh, Shawn Michaels said had uh, he had unbelievable potential or something along those lines. Uh, hilarious! This is awesome chant right after that drop kick. That was an awesome move, but it's not an awesome match here on the pre-show. Uh, it was a decent as it was, a, it was about decent as it, as good as it gets. But the fans are excited. It, it's clear, it, but they need to know what awesome means. Uh, I blame the other crowds for this. For the record, Saudi Arabia aren't the only ones. They're just excited for wrestling. I'm sure. A haluva kick by Zayn and then a blue thunder bomb for the victory. Good little match here, around 10 minutes in length. It just went under 10 minutes, I believe. Sami Zayn got the win, and it rated two and a half stars. Good little match there. More videos in, until we get the main show, and they do a Rollins and McIntyre package. Michael Cole and Bad News Barrett are on commentary, welcoming us to Crown Jewel 2023. And they begin talking about Rollins and Drew, and uh, Cole messes up his intro line. Uh, he had a tongue twister, and uh, but the perfectionist in him probably hated it. Anyways, we start off Crown Jewel with Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre for Rollins' world heavyweight title. Uh, this one had me thinking Drew will lose, but can he afford the loss? I'm thinking they give Drew a win at the Rumble or Mania if he didn't win this match. Uh, this match was an opener. It was a great booking decision. I like how they're beginning the shows with these type of matches. Um, Drew and Seth make awkward facial expressions due to the crowd chanting. I didn't like that. The beginning of the match happened, and then they made these weird facial expressions as if they were just listening to the crowd but not concentrating on the story, if that makes sense. I, I feel like they should have been telling a story, and instead they just were both... Uh, kind of acting to the crowd. I can see playing off a crowd when you're in mid-match, but not from the very start of a match when the bell rings. You want that to be the story that you're telling the audience. Nonetheless, didn't take anything that much away from the match. It's just the starting, you get a little bit, okay, maybe they're not following the story we just saw in the video package for 10 minutes. That's all. Superplex by Rollins off the top rope. Drew reversed a falcon arrow into a suplex of his own as he rolled through it on the canvas floor. Uh, he literally counted a three without counting the three, the referee that time, as Drew countered the suplex. He counted, it was almost a three. Superplex by Rollins off the top. Drew reversed a falcon arrow into a suplex of his own. And, uh, and that's, that was the near fall that I was just referring to. A future shock DDT by McIntyre after an awkward spot in the corner. A buckle bomb attempt as Rollins' back gave out, as said Michael Cole, as he explained that one away. 
Drew was waiting for Seth to get up and and to give him a claymore. Rollins really he sells the back in this match. Uh, Drew found out he played possum and it actually had went for an inside cradle. Barrett gives Bret Hart the nod, saying that he pulls a Bret Hart because Bret Hart had done that in Survivor Series 95. He rolled up Diesel for the victory for the WWF title win. He also did it get against Mr. Perfect. I remember at King of the Ring 93. Uh, Rollins grabbing his back after the suicide dive to the outside. Drew, throw, Drew then threw Rollins right into the steps. Drew hits a side slam on the apron. So all this work going against Rollins' back, killing this back here. Rollins turned his offense into a pedigree, but Drew McIntyre got the shoulder up. What they did is they put the climax in the middle of the match. That way it looks like an all-time classic. They do this on purpose, of course. Uh, there's stiff shots to the head of Drew. Not that it's not a classic. It so far is going in that direction. Uh, stiff shots by both men. Drew catches him and d- drives his back into the corner hard, and then two belly to belly suplexes, further injuring the back. Then an inverted neck breaker by Drew, who kips up. The Scottish Warrior called for a claymore, but Seth R- to put Seth Rollins away and become the new champion. He went for it, and Seth hit a super kick, and then a stomp, and Drew McIntyre kicked out of that. Tons of false finishes. Uh, I wish they built these finishes up a little bit deadly, but with all the kicks out, it kind of changes, the cheapens the finishers in a way. Seth goes to the corner, but you got to finger his bad back will come into play. He missed a corkscrew moonsault and a claymore to Rollins, and he kicked out of Drew McIntyre's claymore. Again, dramatic near falls after he, Rollins kicks out of the claymore. It's great not knowing who's going to win, but these kickouts uh, are definitely helping the match's quality, but it's it's cheapening the kickout, the the finishing maneuvers. Vance chanted one more time uh, for the thrust kick. Drew McIntyre misses a claymore and gets hit with a pedigree and then another curb stomp, and that did him in at 18 minutes. Seth Rollins hard fought, tons of false finishes. You had think Drew of you had to think Drew had to get the victory, but he didn't. The match was good. Seth's back didn't really play into the finish, and I didn't like how it made a lot of these finishers look pedestrian. I agree with Rollins winning. I just wish he didn't take everything but the kitchen sink to put him away, to put McIntyre away. I get trying to protect McIntyre, but the loss builds to his character of being frustrated. So that's at least Drew has that. This adds to his character. Maybe he turns heel because of this. Uh... This puts over Rollins a little bit more as well. And the end his title reign, and it puts prestige on that. So I like the decision for Rollins to go over. It was an intriguing match. Great match. Not classic, but great. I rate it three stars and three quarters. So 3.75 stars for that match. In the backstage, Rhea Ripley walks past McIntyre with a I told you so type of attitude. Uh, after this match, I should have mentioned, there was a brief moment when Damian Priest tried to run to the ring to try and get him to cash in, but Zayn stole the briefcase and ran away, so Damian Priest didn't get to cash in. He was going to on Rollins, but Sami Zayn stole the briefcase. Next, we have a five women, and so again, the opener was three stars, three quarters. I, I rated it. Uh, second, we have the five women match for Ripley's title. Uh, Nia Jax, Zoe Stark, Rhea Ripley, Shayna Baszler, and company. And Raquel Rodriguez. So uh, this one, they did the double team up on Nia Jax. Uh, she shoved Rodriguez into the ring post. Rhea Ripley with a baseball slide to Nia, who then dragged Ripley to the floor. Inside the rig, Jax hit Stark. Rodriguez helped Baszler with a suplex to, to Jax. The other four look at each other in the corner, and then they have all four of them just come to the center of the ring and brawl. Baszler took down Rodriguez and tried to make her tap. Ripley then gets a submission hold to both ladies at the same time. Then a Carafuda clutch to Jax, so she has three submissions at one time to three of the other four ladies. Pretty great as it's something different. Stark broke it up and then covered Shayna for a near fall. Uh, there was a superplex including four ladies to Rhea Ripley as uh, four ladies were sitting up for a suplex of their own and then a vertical suplex came back the other way. Jack splashes Shayna in the corner and now looks for the bonsai drop but Ripley moved her out of the way so Jax fell down and hit herself. A corkscrew elbow by Rodriguez to Jax but Rhea Ripley wouldn't let her pin and they go toe-toe-toe with blows themselves. Uh, 
both are drop kicked to the outside by Zoe Stark, who Barrett calls the dark horse, who nobody is watching. A springboard sent on by Stark to, uh, taking out Rodriguez and Rhea Ripley. Zoe back in with a springboard missile drop kick to Ripley for the victory, but Jax breaks up the pinfall attempt. Jax screams that it's all about her. There's action all over the place. The finish came in a sequence where Zoe Stark gets Zia Rhea Ripley up top. Rhea Ripley hits a riptide off the top rope, which actually broke a pinning attempt by Jax to Shayna right below. And Rhea Ripley covers Baszler after the collision to retain the ladies' title after landing on her with the top rope riptide at 11.06. So in the end, Rhea Ripley is still champion. Even though she only had a 20% chance of coming out with the belt, she retains the title. And this match overall was a schmoz. She, she says mommy always stays on top. Predictable winner. Decent spots in the match, though, so not terrible, not bad, pretty good. I get it two stars and a quarter. All right, now we had John Cena and and Solo Sokola. Cena has has made it known he hasn't won in five years, and uh, he's on a long losing streak, and he needs to beat Solo Sokola. Uh, Sokola, this match just basically teased the Simone Spike uh, over and over, and then when we got the spike, it wasn't. Uh, just once uh, Sokola got a chin lock on Cena uh, he's waiting for Cena to regain his vertical base as he grounds him he hits him with the trapezius hold uh, he goes for a Samoan strike uh, and Cena counters it with shoulder blocks uh, he hits a you can't see me uh, then waits for the attitude adjustment but he counters and hits a Samoan atomic drop Cena and Sokola go back and forth a rock bottom after fighting off, off the Samoan spike He's doing everything he can. Uh, both men have fired shots with Sokola. Hits a bookend to Cena, but he kicks out. A spike hit, but the damage to his arm has been felt. Both men to their feet as Cena had worked on his arm to try to avoid the Samoan spike. Uh, Cena still gets up slowly and then and then gets hit with the third spike. No cover for Sokola, who wastes time, but he keeps giving John Cena a spike and then a fourth spike and then a fifth. And then he went down and acted like a savage and gave him about a dozen. Uh, he ends up pinning John at 15.30 after all those Samoan spikes. Interesting choice to have Sokola win. Obviously, this will write Cena off TV for a while and he'll come back with an even bigger vengeance and it'll be an even bigger deal for Cena to try and win. But and this pushes Sokola, so I should have seen this win coming, but I didn't. I really thought Cena was going to win, uh, but I should have seen this. This is the smart choice. This is the logical choice. But WWE isn't the most logical, smart company all the time. So there's that. <laughs> uh, I want to give this match a good rating, but its first its first half was pretty dreadful. I like that it wasn't just heel beating on Cena. Cena comes back with a comeback win. They actually had it go back and forth, but the first half there was some pretty slow moments. So I give this two stars and three quarters. Almost a three star match. It was good. I'll just say that. It was alright. On Miz TV we had a guest Abraham, I'm going to butcher the name, but Abraham al Haja. Uh, he comes and he gets a great reaction from the crowd. Grayson Waller comes out and says it's not 2005, it's 2023. He says Miz TV uh, is the hottest show, said Abraham, when Grayson Waller says it's not. And then that Abraham guy hits the people's elbow on Grayson Waller. Funny enough, I guess, back in the day we used to get pointless piper pits with Brother Love screaming about things that made no sense. So this is all right for today. Next, we had a classic match here. Rey Mysterio defended the U.S. title against Logan Paul. Every time I see Logan Paul, I'm more impressed with the guy. We already know he's legit before he came into wrestling, but he he's just so good at this. Uh, what a what a, a what a chemistry in this match, and also what a great strategic wrestler he was in this match. He he worked the limbs from top to bottom, staying with the shoulder, staying with the core, staying with the arm. Uh, yeah, and Ray knows how to hit all kind of counters as a as a veteran. Uh, six one nine. He was in a six one nine position. Was Logan Paul, but then he launched Ray on top, and then he came with the cross body and uh, slamming him to the mat. Then a springboard sent on off the ropes, and it scored Ray a near fall. Uh, Paul said he'd be Lucha Logan after this match. He came with body shots. And any time somebody comes from MMA or boxing with body shots, I just think they should just not because we like to suspend our disbelief. And it kind of... 
it kind of makes it like you could kill that person with those shots. So just stick to the wrestling is my opinion. I'm talking about Ronda Rousey, Brock Lesnar, etc. Stick to the wrestling moves because it's more believable. We, we think you'd knock everybody's head off with a punch. Um, not all the time, though. He got a tremendous elevation, did Logan Paul, when he tried to do the Ultimate Warriors move. He then tried to do Bruno San Martino's move as he had him in the shoulder backbreaker. Um, and he was getting openings, and Cole said he was studying wrestling tape. Maybe he was. And how refreshing is it that when this match went to the outside, there was no commercial? No commercial because it's a pay per view or PLE. Uh, and Mysterio with Lucha maneuvers to Paul. Nice maneuvers. What a maneuver. Mysterio comes in. That was McMahon. That was a McMahon impression, by the way. <laughs> Mysterio came off the ropes with a cross face. Logan Paul got a follow a slam. Uh, he did that off the top rope. Amazing elevation. Logan Paul mocked Eddie Guerrero as he came off the top. So he's just imitating everybody. The Warrior, Bruno, Eddie. All three have passed away. So Mysterio with the high kick. Logan Paul held Ray into the corner. Hard to believe we're in the climax now. One of Logan Paul's entourage members handed him brass knucks, which is how he defeated Ricochet once before. He loses the knucks, but the guy, they call him a goof on the outside. That's Logan's friend. He picks them up again, or goes to, but Santos Escobar is stepping on it, and 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 then after the and then 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 I can speak. Sorry, and then after Escobar stepped on it, and he's standing on the knucks. Uh, he may, and calling him goof. It makes me think of the Mean Street Posse, Just Joe, you know the usual suspects. Logan Paul picked up the brass knucks, and as a 619 connects, Paul counted it with the brass knuckles on Ray as he tried a West Coast pop after he springboarded back in the ring. Logan Paul hits him with one shot after he had the knucks in his hand. After Ray came in with the West Coast pop, that dropped Ray, and we have a new U.S. champion. The Maverick wins at 1730 approximately. Paul has a drink, gets the good upset win, and uh, I, I agree with all the winners on the night so far. I think they made the right choice. So new U.S. champion Logan Paul, I rate that match four stars. Borderline classic here at Crown Jewel. And uh, is it match of the night? Well, we'll have to wait and see, but it was one of them. Bianca talks trash during their interview. The last time she did that, last night on SmackDown, she uh, got jumped, but not this time. Uh, ladies were showing no skin, of course, because that's just how it is down there. Um, every time Bianca Belair did some offense, uh, she she showed off her power. Uh, where, whereas when Io Sky did her offense, she showed off that she was aiming to uh, she was aiming for Belair's back and her leg, I should say, her injured knee. Uh, so uh, Bianca Belair did a lot of power offense while EO Sky came back with shots to the leg and then that somehow uh, some pace at some time in this match Bailey came and Bailey was trying to be a distraction out there. Belair hit a release German suplex with grid elevation and she remembers to sell the leg as EO Sky had a ton of leg locks submissions on her in the middle of the match. They take it to the outside, and all I see is Bailey bent over on the ropes. So my imagination went skyward for a little bit. <laughs> uh, but hey, I'm, I'm only human. Uh, and all of a sudden, Kyrie Sane showed up. Sky d to a distracted Bel Air, and Eo Sky came off the top and retained the title. Good match here that went about 15, just above 15 minutes. Kyrie Sane uh, beats on Bianca after the match. This one went pretty long, as I mentioned. I gave it three stars and a quarter. Um, I'm probably even being harsh. I'm going to change that right now to three and a half stars. Uh, that's uh, I keep a list, so that's why I was updating there. Uh, three and a half stars for that match. It was a good women's match. Nothing, nothing amazing. It was uh, pretty good, or really good, I should say. Nothing great or amazing, but good. And good is uh, the perfect word for that. Damian Priest took on Cody Rhodes next. The crowd loved the oh as they got to do it for once uh, or twice or three times depending how many times they go to these shows. But they, uh, Cody Rhodes came to the out and uh, him and Priest went at it. On the outside, Priest tries to hit a razor's edge to a table. The, to the table that the Saudi Arabian commentators were 
calling on and the monitors were removed. Priest then got hit with a suicide dive by Cody and then Priest ended up on the table. Cody then hit the reckoning on the table. The crowd chant one more time as Priest says no no with his finger as Priest hit the reckoning on Cody. Cody counters Priest's offense with a crossroads inside the ring. Balor interferes at this point, and Cody kicks out to the surprise of no one. A Cody Rhodes match finish on a PLE with one run-in? No, it's not going to be the finish. Cody Rhodes loves his matches to be overly booked. Cody hit all his signature offense, and Priest still kicked out. Cody then goes for another crossroads with Damian Priest with a step up in Zaguri, then another one from the apron. Cody then goes for another uh, crossroads by Damian Priest. Uh, and then goes for a double axe handle and walks right into a kick. A massive Cody cutter off the top and Priest kicked out still. This match has just been a kick out fest. Not much selling or storytelling going on here. Damian Priest finds himself in the crossroads and hit again. A hat trick and a three count. Again, just a crash and bang type of match as he got the victory. Uh, I rate this match three stars. Uh, good, good stuff, but uh, not great. I felt it was. I just felt it was a kick out fest. I really thought there was no storytelling other than that. Uh, next up, we have the main event: LA Knight versus Roman Reigns, and we're all we all know Roman was uh, gonna win. I gave him probably like a ninety five percent chance in my mind before going into this one. So how is he gonna win? And how is LA Knight gonna still look strong? That's what I kind of thought when I came into the match, and we'll see what happens after I'm done. Uh, Roman Reigns threw cut him to the outside. They brawled a little bit. LA Knight, LA Knight was insanely over. Everybody has their yeah signs. Roman hung on to the top rope. LA launches himself into Roman. He body slams him, and Knight has the crowd behind him, completely saying yeah for every bump uh, LA has going in his way. Roman, in control, sends Knight to the ring steps and begins his methodical beatdown. And it's funny because I wrote the words methodical beatdown, and then Michael Cole says methodical beatdown right after. So either I'm listening to too much Michael Cole, or I'm, or that's just a coincidence. I hope it's a coincidence. <laughs> Either way, Roman continued with his beatdown talk, and he's crocky as hell, and I just love how he just slowly talks trash. I can't believe watching Roman like this. I can't believe that we ever had to listen to that sniveling, suck-up, sell-out form of suffering suck son. I know, that wasn't hard to say. It wasn't easy to say. Damn it. I fucked up a cocky line. Fuck. Sorry about that. I I wrote down Roman Reigns' succotash line, and I didn't say it right. <laughs> uh, whatever. S -s -s Sniveling suck-up sell-up form of suffering succotash, son. <laughs> but for real, what the fuck? Anyway. LA Knight measured uh, Roman with a comeback, finds an opening. Both guys brawl in the middle of the ring. Roman Reigns get hit with a rock bottom and then gets... Roman Reigns hit a rock bottom, and he got a two count on LA Knight. LA Knight hits a signature offense, and the crowd are really believing him. They're digging this. He goes and his, hits his elbow drop after leaping on top to get Roman off with a superplex, and Roman still kicks out. Sokola in the aisle way distracts the ref, and then Jimmy Uso saves his cousin and puts his leg on the ropes. Knight then grabs, uh, he grabbed Knight and hit his offense on Knight, and Roman hits a Superman punch to Knight. Roman spears Knight, but he kicked out of it. Roman Reigns looks shocked. He gets back in control with a strong headlock, wearing down Knight, but Knight is battling out, and Roman can't believe it. Knight gains offensive momentum. Jimmy Uso put Roman's leg on the rope again, and LA Knight would have won the title. Michael Cole says that whole reign by Roman Reigns would have came to an end if LA Knight wasn't. Uh, me messed with there. Uh, LA Knight hits, yeah, drives Jimmy Uso and Roman headfirst into the table, and they're saying, yeah, the crowd is after each shot. Knight puts Jimmy Uso through the table, but Roman hits a spear on the barricade right after that. Roman with the spear in the ring right after spearing Knight through the barricade and gets the victory at 2046, approximately. Roman Reigns champion 
so Roman Reigns is champion for 1,168 days. That's seven longer than Michael Cole said because I'm going to the next SmackDown six days later. Because that's when Roman, that's the nearest time Roman can lose the belt. SmackDown, right? So that's 1,168 days away. Uh, I gave this match three stars, three quarters. Very close to four stars. Uh, it's probably as close as you can get. Uh, Roman's still the champion. They made LA Knight look strong. Was this match a little bit premature? You could you could argue that. I, I'm not being as picky. I thought that's good that they got, gave LA Knight a taste. It kind of reminded me of when they put John Cena in a match with Brock Lesnar at Backlash 03. Cena wasn't really ready, but... Um, but they did it, and it happened. So if Cena can get by that, LA Knight can too. Um, and honestly, this show, out of 10, I'd give it a 6.5, maybe a 7, but a 6.5 is what I, where I'm going to land on. I thought the opener was a borderline classic, as, lo as was Logan and Ray. Love the psychology in the Logan Ray match. It was a smart match. The main event delivered, and there were some good matches in the middle of it, too. I'm not going to be overly cynical for this event. Uh, I'm not going to call it just an average show. If I were being honest, I'd like to like things a little bit better than that. So thanks for tuning into this 25 minute. My as my nose is runny, a 25 minute review of Crown Jewel. I really thank you for sticking with this. I didn't know it was going that long, but I want to try and give a good review. I'll get better with reading my notes of the presentation. I'll also try to get a microphone going. I'll try to get everything to make this channel better. So I hope you subscribed, and you guys see that. All right, for Crown Jewel, I'm Brett Mix, and I'm out. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you on the next one.